predictions video and if you've never seen one of these before I basically just go through all of the matchups in the upcoming weekend and give you my thoughts on who is winning who is losing and why so ordinarily we would start off with Thursday night football but seeing as that has already passed we'll save that for the recap video long story short I went bold once again on Thursday night and it didn't work out in my favor so three straight Thursday night failures on my end but we will see We'll keep up the boldness uh, just for fun. Anywho, moving into the Sunday slate, we start off with a matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, this game should be a fun one. I don't think anyone predicted before the season started that the Panthers would have a better record than the Bengals heading into this matchup, but that is reality. We have the Panthers at 1-2 and, and the Bengals at 0-3. Uh, this is also an Andy Dalton revenge game, which means he might be on his best behavior trying his hardest to go for another Panthers upset here. Uh, I'll be, I do think that this is a tougher matchup than the Raiders from last week. Um, it's tough. I, I can't really imagine the Bengals starting 0-4. I obviously couldn't imagine them starting 0-3 either. Um, I think each week I have predicted. Now, I guess I, against the Chiefs, I did have the Chiefs. But it has been pretty surprising to see them start this poorly. It really needs to come on the defensive end. Now, the Panthers' offense was rolling last week. If they play like they did, I could easily see them coming out on top in this one. I'm going to go with my gut and say that the Bengals finally pick up their first win in the Panthers after catching the Raiders off guard. I think that people are going to know what Andy Dalton is capable of, know how to limit him more so. We didn't have film on him in a while. so. I think that the Bengals can do it here, and I think ideally they should do it. If they don't win this game, they are out of the playoff picture completely. Even right now, their odds are slim, but if they want any chance of this being a competitive season, they have to get this win, and I think that they're going to go out and do it. So, going with the Bengals here. After that, we've got a matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, you know, battle for the title in the NFC South. Well, I guess not the title, just... A lot of people had the Falcons winning this year, and then the Saints started off the year very strong before falling to that Philly team last week. I think that this will be a pretty important matchup for both teams. Right now, Atlanta sitting at a 1-2 record, but being pretty close in their loss to Kansas City. Uh, one play away from winning that game, really speaking, and the Saints starting off scorching hot, but now cooling off against Philadelphia who really wasn't playing the best defense through two weeks, but they found a way to shut down the Saints. Um, so it's going to be about who can respond better from their loss from last week. I personally think that the Saints have an edge in this game. I think that they are... They, they looked really good in weeks one and two. Uh, not as impressive last week, but I think there was more good to work off of versus bad for the Falcons so far. I, I didn't necessarily like what I saw in what they were able to produce last week. I think that he, the Bichon Robinson being as limited as he was against the team, the Saints have a lot of things to limit the Falcons. They, the Falcons have been limited a couple times. They also barely won their game against the Eagles the week before, whereas the Saints... They were leading in that game, and at the very end, the Eagles managed to steal it, but the Saints also not too far from starting off 3-0. I want to say that they go into Atlanta and take this one. After yeah. that, sorry about that, I'm trying to soundproof my door, and I've gotten the top and bottom so far, and not the edges. And some of my roommates, they just, like, they speak so loudly and clearly that it sounds like they're in the room with me, so I do apologize for that. I'm, I'm trying to work on it, but I, I wish I could just tape their mouths for a little bit. I won't lie. Anyway, after that, we've got the Jaguars and the Texans. Uh, this is a game between the best and, I guess, the worst team in the AFC South. Jaguars starting 0-3. Now they get matched up against the Texans team, who through two weeks looked pretty good and then got absolutely smacked by the Vikings. Even then, I think the Jaguars got smacked even worse. Um, and there really has been 
no positives for that team. Almost got a win against the, Dolph the Dolphins, but it's only gotten worse every week after. I don't think they're trending the right way. They have truly been disappointing. I thought that the Jaguars were a playoff team, but I do think that they probably start 0-4 and going, you know, Texans playing at home, uh, wanting to get the steer of the ship in the correct direction after that Vikings loss. I think that they'll respond well, and I, I really do trust them to do with this Jaguars team um, what they were supposed to do with the Vikings. And yeah, I'm going to predict the Texans win here, and the Jaguars fall to 0-4, and, and I guess they have to miss the playoffs, so there goes they call my predictions. <laughs> Anywho, after that, we've got a matchup between the Broncos and the Jets. Nathaniel Hackett, uh, revenge game, you know, he was to coach for the Broncos and did a pretty terrible job of it, I must say. Now he is OC for the Jets, reunited with Aaron Rodgers, and though he got a lot of the blame last year, I think people are starting to realize with a competent quarterback, he's not that bad. Broncos getting a surprise victory last week against the Buccaneers. Don't know where they pulled that one out from. Um, so, you know, I think that <laughs> we have to give them a little more credit. Or I have to give them a little more credit. I didn't think that they were quite ready to be a competitive team. But looks like they have entered that zone where maybe they can pull off an upside win here or there. But this Jets team, I do think it's just too tall of a task so far. Uh, first time in a long time that the Jets have been able to string together three offensive touchdowns in their first three games. And so their offense is just performing at a level it hasn't in a lot of previous years. Mm. Uh, Broncos defense is it's okay. Uh, nothing too crazy, but the Jets defense is very nice. So I, I think that the Jets will be able to avoid the Broncos upset win here um, and continue rolling on their impressive start to the season. Well, I guess impressive last two weeks, not a good start, but last two weeks have looked good and I think that the Broncos are a fairly easy task once again and they'll get a win here. Next up, we've got the Vikings and the Packers. And Jordan Love might be coming back. Um, you know, the crazy thing is, if Jordan Love comes back, I almost... Uh, I mean, I guess either way, I don't trust the Packers to win this game. The Vikings have looked so good, so unexpectedly good, starting off the season 3-0 against the Giants. I didn't even have them winning, but they, they dominated in that game. And then back-to-back -back weeks, taking down really impressive, good teams, uh, completely dismantling the Texans, catching the 49ers off guard. This Vikings team on both sides of the ball looks legit, and Sam Darnold has the most passing touchdowns of any quarterback in the league. And this Packers team, they're either being led by Malik Willis, uh, who has played really well. I'll give you that. He's played really well. But the teams that you beat were the Titans and the Colts and the Vikings are doing a lot better than either of those teams. Uh, and then if Jordan Love does come back, I don't really expect him to dominate straight off of this injury. It does seem like they're it would be a bit too quick, even if he were to come back. I don't like it. I think the Vikings' D-line does come after him a lot. He's going to have to put a lot of pressure on that knee. Uh, I don't like the odds. So I'm actually going to go with the Vikings here. The first time I'm picking the Vikings this season. <laughs> Let's see if it pans out. But they have finally earned my respect, and I will pay my dues. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Steelers and the Colts. Steelers, starting off 3-0 firmly in the driver's seat in that AFC North. Uh, and then you've got the Colts, where Anthony Richardson, after a good first week, well, even in the passing game, he, he makes a lot of impressive throws, but his completion percentage not great. He is very turnover prone. He's not been running as much. Uh, I think that there are things to figure out with Anthony Richardson, and it's not going to be easy against the Steelers' defense. Uh, Steelers' defense is very stingy, has got, been very good to start off this season, and the offense has done just well enough. You know, not that glitz and glamour but Justin Fields has played well enough that they were able to start off 3-0. He's playing, he's playing very minimal. 
to stake free football. And as long as that continues to persist, I think that they are in a good spot. I'm going to go with the Steelers starting off 4-0 uh, on this and another Colts loss. Now, if the Colts, if Anthony Richardson plays a good game with no mistakes, I think that they could win. I just don't really see it happening. Um, especially against this defense. But yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers there. After that, you've got a matchup between the Rams and the Bears. Uh, the Rams coming off an upset victory with the 49ers, really snatching it in the last quarter there. And then the Chicago Bears having Caleb Williams' best week last year, uh, last week, but still losing to the Colts. And realistically, I think like both teams are kind of weak in their different ways. Sorry, in their different ways. Uh, I think that the Rams are more so injured and the Bears are more so just inexperienced and bad at blocking. So between the two, I think that you can expect maybe one Matthew Stafford in interception, maybe two uh, Williams interceptions. And from that, the Bears running game has not really been in existence. I do think I still like Kyron Williams more. Uh, in terms of receivers, the Bears are loaded, but Williams just has not been good as a decision maker in getting the ball to them without throwing the picks as well, so the turnovers have been costly. And I think Matthew Stafford somehow managed to do it last week, uh, and Sean McVay I just trust way more as a coach, so I'm going to go with an LA Rams victory here, moving them to 2-2 two and two and moving the Bears to 1-3. After that, we've got a matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This should be a very interesting game. Uh, you know, both teams starting off the season at 2-1, uh, each looking to lead their respective divisions. Eagles with a victory would be still potentially tied for first place with the Commanders. Buccaneers, if they win, still potentially tied for first place with the Saints, and so an important game for both. I think that both teams will be good and probably could be making the playoffs this year. Uh, Buccaneers more on what they showed in weeks one and two. Last week not as good. Um, Eagles on the other hand, I think they really did have week two in the bag, and they just messed up. Saquon Barkley drop ruined them from having a three and zero start, and I I like their talent ceiling more. I don't know if A.J. Brown is. I actually don't know if he played last week. Uh, shame on me. <laughs> I, I wasn't able to watch as many games last week, but he was, as a whole, I do like their offense. I do like their defense. I think that they will be a dangerous team, and they took the 40-plus performing Saints and brought them to a screeching halt, uh, getting the victory in the end. Saquon has been amazing in his debut. Buccaneers are defense is nice, but uh, Buccaneers also really can't move the ball in the run game. Richard White is horrible in terms of efficiency. Bucky Irving getting a lot of snaps last week and being much more efficient, but I'm sure that the Eagles will be able to contain him, so it'll really come down to the wideouts of both teams. I think Chris Godwin could go off against the Eagles. I think that teams have had some sort of success against the Bucks. I think, like, Amon Ross St. Brown had decent week, week two against the Bucks. Week one, uh, Jaden Daniels, I guess he wasn't able to connect with his receivers all that much, but they still put up a decent number of points. And last week, Bo Nix didn't throw for a passing touchdown, but they did well. Um, yeah, I think that the Eagles offense, they'll find a way to overcome the Bucks defense. It'll be a close matchup. I could see it going either way. Personally, I'm going Eagles, but I would not be surprised if the Buccaneers won here. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Patriots and the 49ers, both 1 and 2, by the way. Uh, never thought I would say that. It's gotta be tough. It's gotta be tough if you are a 49ers fan to watch the way that they crumbled last week. Really had that game, uh, should have won that game, and they did not after a really good... first week, just a flat start to week two, and then horrible ending to week three, they do get a 
much easier matchup with the Patriots. Patriots offense doesn't have it. Can't really throw for more than 150 yards. And as long as you don't let them establish the run first, then it's over. So I think that they're going to copy the game script that the Jets had. They have a pretty good defense as well. Um, and yeah, I don't think that the Patriots offense is good enough to overcome it. Very injured and battered 49ers offense. I think that the Patriots might be able to do a decent job of limiting them. But I thought that about the Jets, and I was wrong. So going to go with a 49ers victory here to bring them back to 500, and the Patriots start 1-3. Next up, we've got the Commanders and the Cardinals. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Both the dynamic dual threat quarterbacks. We've got Jaden Daniels versus Kyler Murray. Uh, Commanders coming off a fantastic victory over the Bengals, which I was not expecting. Uh, they did not punt, they did not turn the ball over. Jaden Daniels completed 21 of 23 passes. Uh, I mean, two weeks ago, Kyler Murray had a very similar week. so. Both, both dudes seem capable of incredible weeks. I... Where the Cardinals did play last week? One second, let me look it up. I don't remember the Cardinals. Was it the Lions? It was the Lions. Lions, you know, kept it to a one-score game. Did a good job in the second half. <laughs> Might get some hate for this one, but I think that the Cardinals will come out with a victory here. I just think that the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, and the Cardinals coaching staff. Uh, I don't know if I can even gun for the coaching staff like that. Still pretty unproven. I am pretty torn on this one. I could see it going either way. I think that the Lions are a very competitive team. The Bengals, also, I was expecting them to be a competitive team. I just know that, like, when the Cardinals beat the Rams, it was really good, and then they almost beat the Bills. Uh, the Commanders do have the better record, though, winning against the Giants and the Bengals and losing week one to the Bucks. I think the law of averages, the Cardinals will win here. Uh, the average, I don't think that the Cardinals really are a one in three team. I don't think the Commanders are a three in one team. I think that both teams will just allow it to a two and two after this week. Commanders, realistically, yes, they could be building. They could have an even better week, and they could do it. But I think that it's going to be really hard to replicate what they did last week. But what they did last week was phenomenal, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a they get hit, they get rocked. Um, if if they continue playing like they did last week, Jane Daniels might end up having like a Patrick Mahomes type season, rookie season. I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the Cardinals victory here. After that, you've got a matchup between the Chiefs and the Chargers. No Justin Herbert. Patrick Mahomes owns the AFC West. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs here. Uh, the Chiefs haven't even really been that impressive after week one. They held off the Ravens, but then barely holding off both teams in the following weeks. And I've seen a lot of people complain about how much help they have been getting for, from the referees. Personally, I only saw the first game of theirs, and it looked somewhat even. Uh, I didn't catch the last two of their games, so I can't speak on it. But the Chargers could not do anything against the Steelers last week once Herbert was down, and I don't think that is going to change. So I'm going to go with the Chiefs' victory here. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Browns and the Raiders. Mamma mia, uh, this is going to be a hard game to watch. <laughs> You've got the Raiders coming off of a loss against the League Wars Panthers. And then you've got the Browns, who are also coming off a loss against the League Wars Giants. I think that both those teams were pretty low in people's books before these teams faced them, and now they were, they had to be the laughing stock for a week, and now they face a bad dad. Dude, what are these noises? Uh, anyway, I, I really don't, I don't know who has an edge in this game. I think Devontae Adams being out is somewhat significant. Um, I think Michael Mayer is also out. 
outside. Eight sacks. Eight sacks is nasty work. And this team has Max Crosby, but truly speaking, I want to say the Browns have their winning formula down more. Uh, the Raiders, Gardner Minshew, after being top two in passing yards, had a colder week last week, and they did get upset by is going to be 
by far the best quarterback they've faced up against this Lions team and all its weapons is the biggest challenge they're going to have to deal with. And, yeah, Lions defense as well. Um, I think that the Seahawks, even though they're at 3-0 and, and they've done really well, I do think that the Lions are going to be able to stop them here and bring both teams to a 3-1 and one record. Maybe, maybe the Seahawks pull it off, they continue and move to 4 and oh. uh, but it's, it's hard for me to say that just because I don't think that they have played that great of a team yet. Uh, Lions, on the other hand, playing Matthew Stafford week one, and then in week two, losing to that Buccaneers team, but the Bucs still made the playoffs, and then last week, beating the Cardinals. Uh, I think just in general, their quarterback matchups have been harder, and they've done a better job. I'm going to give it to the Lions here. Uh, and yeah, that concludes my predictions for this week. Let me go through all of them real quick once again. I've got the Bengals over the Panthers, the Saints over the Falcons, the Texans over the Jaguars, the Jets over the Broncos, the Vikings over the Packers, the Steelers over the Colts, the Rams over the Bears, the Eagles over the Buccaneers, the 49ers over the Patriots, the Cardinals over the Commanders, Chiefs over the Chargers, the Browns over the Raiders, the Ravens over the Bills, the Titans over the Dolphins, and the Lions over the Seahawks. So with that, we conclude our week four predictions. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree. Um, I feel like some of these takes are probably against the popular consensus. I think after week two, I've learned, you know, I went with the majority on everything, went seven and nine on my picks. It was too easy. It was too easy. Sometimes you do have to go for the less obvious ones. I tried that last week, and uh, it did end up benefiting, going in my favor. So they may be questionable, but I feel decent about them. I could see getting another like embarrassing week, but uh, I'm rocking with it. I think I'm pretty okay with all my picks. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoy videos like this. I'll be putting out more as the weeks progress. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you.